very dark time. All of his dreams are in shambles at this point. While toiling to feed himself and raise capital for new inventions, Tesla was appalled at the web of power wires strung up in the city. The whole system was a nightmare of cables and wiring overhead. Matter of fact, in some areas, it even blocked out the sun. The electrical system he found deficient was called direct current, or DC. Edison, Tesla's former employer, was a major investor in DC power. Tesla knew there was a better way and was determined to invent a new system that will become the global standard, alternating current, or AC. Here's a direct current cable that would carry about a million watts to light a typical New York City block. Using alternating current in Tesla's AC system, a small wire such as this could power the same amount of homes. Same amount of power, just look at the difference. The difference between AC and DC power is all about how electricity or electrons flow. For DC current to work, there must be a continuous and direct flow of electrons along a wire from negative to positive poles. When power is applied, electrons, as signified by the red band, move to the work, do the work, and then come all the way back to the generator. The problem with this process is that the electrons encounter resistance along these wires. It's difficult for electrons to travel these great distances. So most of the energy in the system is lost in the wire. Well, the way Thomas Edison envisioned his system, he would have to put a power plant just about every mile to keep the voltage steady along his DC power grid. In 1887, Tesla filed seven US patents for another more efficient and cheaper power system called alternating current. What Tesla discovered in his AC system was it was not necessary to send the electrons all the way to the work and back again. In fact, he alternated the current, sending it back and forth. Tesla developed a system of AC generators that alternated electric current between negative and positive poles at 60 cycles per second. By sending AC through a transformer with virtually no power loss, he could step up the voltage and lower the current so that AC could be efficiently transmitted hundreds of miles further than DC. Millionaire entrepreneur George Westinghouse thought Tesla's inventions could be the key to long distance power transmission. He purchased the patents for $60,000 and a healthy share of stock in the Westinghouse Corporation. If the new AC system was successful, Tesla would be a rich man. Nikola Tesla became a citizen of the United States in 1891. The same year, an all-out current war erupted between his AC and Edison's DC power. Edison launched a propaganda campaign to show the dangers of AC. The public, they had rather grotesque uh, experiments where they would take animals and electrocute them with alternating current. Edison convinced New York State to use Tesla's and Westinghouse's AC power for the very first electrocution in 1890. A reporter called it a gruesome spectacle, far worse than hanging. Edison dubbed the technique Westinghousing. Whether it was electrocuting animals or electrocuting prisoners, the thrust was, this is something you don't want in your house. In 1893, despite the bad press, Tesla and the Westinghouse Corporation won the bid for illuminating the Chicago World's Fair, the first all-electric fair in history. Edison, who made an unsuccessful bid, was frustrated over losing this opportunity and refused to let Tesla use his patented light bulbs. So Tesla needed to come up with a, a new light bulb, make 250,000 of them in six months' time to light the fair. Edison's bulb had a screw base at the bottom. He patented the whole method of powering the bulb through this screw base and how to seal the vacuum off inside. 
Tesla's solution was to have a ground glass stopper in the bottom of the bulb. The wires passed through the stopper and he was able to manufacture a bulb that didn't interfere with Edison's patents. Tesla was able to beat Edison at his own game by producing a lamp that was more easy to manufacture and he was able to, to do so in a short amount of time. On May 1st, 1893, President Grover Cleveland pushed a button and more than 200,000 of Tesla's incandescent lamps illuminated the fairgrounds. It was a monumental success and ushered in the era of modern electric lighting. Tesla was held the mastermind and the genius behind making this possible. And his name was known around the world after this event. Tesla, filled with confidence after this victory over Edison, believed AC would be the current of the future. In order to prove it, he would try to harness the power of one of the world's greatest natural wonders. In 1898, Tesla invented the electrical igniter for gas engines. Today, it's used in more than 600 million cars worldwide and is better known as the automobile ignition system. Mad electricity will return on Modern Marvels. We now return to Mad Electricity on Modern Marvels. Millions have witnessed its stunning power. Niagara Falls can send more than 750,000 gallons of water over its crest every second, producing enough power to generate 2.4 million kilowatts of electricity. At that rate, the falls could power half of Las Vegas on a hot summer night. Ever since pioneers began building sawmills along the Niagara River in the 1700s, many had envisioned grand new ways to harness the thunderous power of the falls. In 1893, after witnessing Tesla and Westinghouse's triumph at the Chicago World's Fair, the Niagara Falls Commission awarded them the contract to tap the falls for generating alternating current. The big problem with using Niagara Falls for electricity was that the major consumer of that electric power was Buffalo. Buffalo is about 20 miles or so, and using DC transmission was totally impractical because a repeater station would have to have been built every two miles. AC avoided all of that. At the falls, Tesla designed and engineered a complex system of generators and transformers to produce his AC power. Tesla didn't write down everything. Most of his stuff was in his head. He had to do it verbally. Tesla was in his own little world, more or less. He would not explain things to other people, but his assistants would. In 1896, the first AC hydroelectric station for long distance power transmission went online and Buffalo became the premier city for AC power's potential. Tesla was not here when he actually flipped the switch, but he had so much confidence in his own work that he knew it worked. Today, new power plants have replaced Tesla's structures. The buildings of one of the most important historical sites in the modern world now stand like dinosaurs, forgotten. And for the man who envisioned it all, only an isolated statue marks his extraordinary achievement. I wonder how many people who come by here past this statue actually have any idea who Nikola Tesla was and what he did to shape their world. Today, our world is ablaze, thanks to Tesla's AC technology. He had won his final battle with Edison but victory came at an enormous cost. Westinghouse was financially drained by the war of the currents. In a grand gesture to keep the company afloat, Tesla tore up his royalties contract, claiming better inventions lay ahead. Had the contract been fulfilled, Tesla would have been a millionaire and been free of uh, financial worries the rest of his life. Money does not represent such a value as men have placed upon it. 
All my money has been invested into experiments with which I have made new discoveries, enabling mankind to have a little easier life.